day, cute angels! Welcome to a new learning episode. I am Teacher Nancy, your teacher for Grade 8 Mathematics. Before we start today's lesson, kindly prepare your self-learning module, your pen, and paper to write your answers as we progress with our discussion. And most importantly, look for a place in your home where you feel safe and comfortable. Please be reminded that you may comment or ask questions at the comment section. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to identify the corresponding parts of congruent triangles and solve corresponding parts of congruent triangles. In the previous episode, you have learned about the triangle congruence postulates. So before we proceed to our discussion, let us see if you still remember them by playing the game Find My Meaning. In this game, you are going to give the meaning of the stated acronyms. You can type your answer on the comment box. Again, you can type your answer on the comment box. Are you ready? Let's play a game. Find my meaning. The first one is S-A-S. What does S-A-S mean? That is correct. SAS means side angle side. The side angle side congruence postulate states that if two sides and the included angle of a triangle are congruent to two sides and the included angle of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. How about the second one? What does the acronym ASA mean? Amazing! The answer is angle side angle. The angle side angle congruence postulate states that if two angles and the included side of a triangle are congruent to two angles and the included side of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. And for the last one, we have the SSS. What does SSS mean? That is right! SSS stands for Side Side Side. The Side 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 congruence postulate states that if three sides of a triangle are congruent to three sides of another triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. Great job, grade 8 learners! It looks like you have already mastered the postulates on triangle congruence. And you're now ready to learn about our new lesson. When do you think two triangles are congruent? From the definition of congruent triangles, congruent triangles are triangles with corresponding sides having the same length and with corresponding angles having the same measure. From the given definition of congruent triangles, the congruence of the corresponding parts of triangles follows. For convenience, you may use the acronym CPCTC to mean corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Two triangles are congruent if their corresponding parts are congruent. If we want to show that two segments or two angles are congruent, we may do so by showing that they are corresponding sides or angles of congruent triangles. Again, CPCTC can be used to find the measures of angles or to show that lines or segments are parallel or perpendicular. Of course, there is no better way of understanding it than having an example. Let's have our first example. In the given figure, triangle REG is congruent to triangle NIG. It is also mentioned that line segment RN is perpendicular to line segment RE, which means they form a 90 degree angle. Same thing goes for line segment RN and line segment IN. It is also stated that they are perpendicular to each other. Lastly, in the given problem, it states that the measure of angle E is equal to 35 degrees. 
and we are tasked to solve for the measurement of angle IGN. I repeat, we need to find the measure of angle IGN. We know that the sum of the measurement of the interior angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. Therefore, for us to solve for the measure of angle IGN, we will use the formula 180 degrees minus the sum of the measurement of angle I and angle N. Since angle E corresponds to angle I, then the measurement of angle I is also equal to 35 degrees. And as mentioned a while back, line segment RN and line segment IN are perpendicular to each other, meaning they formed a 90 degree angle. And that angle is no other than angle N. Now that we know the measures of angle I and angle N, we can now substitute them to our working equation. The measure of angle IGN is equal to 180 minus the measure of angle I, which is 35 degrees, plus the measure of angle N, which is 90 degrees. And 35 plus 90 is equal to 125. So we have 180 minus 125. 180 minus 125 is equal to 55. Again, 180 minus 125 is equal to 55. The measure of angle IGN is equal to 55 degrees. Again, the measurement of angle IGN is 55 degrees. Easy, right? Let's now proceed to our next example. In example 2, triangle PER is congruent to triangle EHT, and the measure of angle R is given, which is equal to 75 degrees. In this example, we are tasked to identify the measure of angle T. Since we have two congruent triangles, then we also have corresponding parts, and one of those corresponding parts is angle R corresponds to angle T. And since the value of R is given, and since the value of R is given, which is 75 degrees, then we can see that the measurement of angle T is also 75 degrees. Again, just to be clearer, since angle R corresponds to angle T, therefore, if angle R is equal to 75 degrees, then angle T is also equal to 75 degrees. Did you get it? Very good. Again, the measurement of angle T is 75 degrees. We may now proceed to example number 3. Triangle PAL is congruent to triangle STI. And line segment PA is equal to 35 millimeters. Find the measure of line segment ST. Can you solve for it? I will give you 10 seconds to determine the measure of line segment ST. And time is up! Great job, grade 8 learners! The answer is 35 millimeters. Since line segment PA corresponds to line segment ST, and since line segment PA is equal to 35 millimeters, then line segment ST is also equal to 35 millimeters. Again, the measurement of line segment ST is 35 millimeters. We are now down to our fourth example. It is given that triangle DOG is congruent to triangle CAT. Side DO is equal to 5 side OG is equal to 6, side DG is equal to 7, and side CA is equal to 2X plus 1. Now, find the value of X. Since triangle DOG is congruent to triangle CAT, then 
line segment DO corresponds to line segment CA. The measurement of line segment DO is 5 and the measurement of line segment CA is 2x plus 1. Since they correspond to each other, our working equation will be the measure of side DO equals the measure of side CA. Substituting the given values of side DO and side CA, we have 5 equals 2x plus 1. And to get the value of x, we will isolate the variable x. So we will add negative 1 both sides. 5 minus 1 is 4 and 1 minus 1 is 0. Or we simply cancel it out. Therefore, we have 4 equals 2x. And to get the value of x, we will divide both sides by 2. We have 4 divided by 2 equals 2x divided by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 2x divided by 2 is 1x or we simply write x. Therefore, the value of x is 2. Did you get it right? We are now down to our last example. Triangle WED is congruent to triangle FRI. It is given that triangle WED is congruent to triangle FRI. The measure of angle W is 65 degrees. The measure of angle D is 45 degrees. And the measure of angle R is 4x plus 10. Find the value of x. Since angle E corresponds to angle R, our equation will be the measure of angle E is equal to the measure of angle R. Since angle E is unknown, we will solve for it first by adding the three angles of triangle WED. The measure of angle W plus the measure of angle E plus the measure of angle D is equal to 180 degrees. Then our working equation for us to solve angle E is 180 minus the sum of the measures of angle W and angle D. Angle W is equal to 65 degrees and angle D is equal to 45 degrees. Substituting them to our working equation, we have the measure of angle E is equal to 180 minus the sum of angle W, which is 65, and angle D, which is 45. 65 plus 45 is equal to 110. Therefore, we have the measure of angle E is equal to 180 minus 110. 180 minus 110 is equal to 70 degrees. So the measurement of angle E is 70 degrees. Now that we have the measurement of angle E, we can now solve for the value of x. Going back to our first statement, Angle E corresponds to angle R. So our working equation is the measure of angle E is equal to the measure of angle R. The measure of angle E is equal to 70, which is the one we solve. And the measure of angle R is given, which is 4x plus 10. Therefore, we have 70 equals 4x plus 10. And to get the value of x, we will isolate it by adding negative 10 both sides, applying the addition property of equality. 70 minus 10 is equal to 4x plus 10 minus 10. 70 minus 10 is equal to 60, and 10 minus 10 is 0, or we simply canceled it out. We now have 60 equals 4x. And to get the value of x, we will divide 4 to both sides. 60 divided by 4 is equal to 4x divided by 4. 60 divided by 4 is equal to 15 and 4x divided by 4 is equal to 1x or we simply write x. The value of x is 15. Great job grade 8 learners! 
so we were able to apply our understanding about solving the corresponding parts of congruent triangles. If there are questions, feel free to ask on the comment section or your subject teacher. Well, that is all for now. I hope you learned a lot today. Again, this is Teacher Nancy Pineda, your teacher for Grade 8 Mathematics. Until next time, have a nice day and God bless us all.